Good morning. This is Bill at Highland Hill Farm, and today I want to talk to you about buying a quality property for hunting, fishing, camping, and recreational activities that you might have if you like the great outdoors. And first, I'm going to tell you about the four pillars of real estate investing that you must understand before you buy a property. And let me premise this by saying, first of all, I am not a real estate agent. I have no properties for sale. I'm not an attorney, so I can't give you legal advice. And I'm not your accountant because I'm not an accountant. But I can tell you that I have bought a lot of properties, probably more properties than most real estate agents ever sell in their lifetime. So I own a lot of hunting properties and I know what I want to buy when I buy a hunting property. So today I'm going to tell you what I look at when I'm looking at buying a hunting property so that you may better understand how to purchase your hunting property. First and foremost, there are four pillars of buying real estate that you must, must understand. And all of these four pillars, you must be able to verify that the property meets these four pillar guidelines that I'm going to give you. First of all, the price has to be right. It has to be the right price for the property. You don't want to overpay for a property just because you saw a big buck deer out on the property. So what you have to first do is divorce yourself from liking and loving a property. You buy properties based on the quality of the investment of the property and whether it can deliver to you what you want from the property. Now, the first thing you have to have is the right price. Then you have to have the right amount of down money that the property requires you to, to bring to the table. And then you must have the right interest rate on that money that you borrow to, to get the rest of the property. And then you must have the right amount of time on that mortgage to pay it off in a reasonable amount of time that it doesn't stress you out. So those are four pillars that you have to have for each and every property that you buy. If you can't win on all four of those pillars, find another property. It's not that difficult. There's millions of properties out there for sale. So it isn't like, you know, uh, you know, it's a seller's market. Oh, the seller controls it. You're the buyer. You control it. Buy, it's always a buyer's market. Now, when you go to look for that correct property, before you even look for the property, think about how you're going to take the deed. And this is where you got to go to an attorney because an attorney can help you determine the best method of holding the deed. Because when you buy the property and you put the deed in your name, it's many times too late to do things like estate planning. You have to go back and redo it and revisit that issue. So what I always like to do is I like to do estate planning when I'm buying a property so that when I die, you know, it can be inherited by either a nonprofit that I want to leave it to or a set of relatives that I want to have the property. Now, the thing you must remember is that not all attorneys can help you with that. You might have to go to a tax accountant attorney. So that's important to understand that you get the right advice from a legal person. But you'll have to figure that one out on your own because I can't give you legal advice and tell you how to do it. Now, what I want you to think about here is a couple of other issues. The right in the property is 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 good. You got to have all the, the 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 structures of the property. You have to have the four pillars. But now you have to test the property for its suitability to make sure that that property is what you want to buy. And you have to have a plan on what you're going to use it for so that you get the best tax treatment. Because it's possible to buy a property that you that pays for itself, gives you tax deductions, and you get to enjoy for, for, for many years. It's possible to get all those things in, the, in there. So it doesn't cost you very much, and you get to write it off, and you get good depreciation. So first thing you might want to think about is where is that property located? For example, if it's in the Northeast, man, there's a lot of things you can do in the Northeast. For example, you can grow trees and shrubs, which is what I do. And the site can be used to, to generate income by growing trees and shrubs. And you get great tax write-offs for ornamental horticultural activities on a property.
It's immediate. You buy money, uh, you spend money on, on, on trees and shrubs, and you get to write it off in that year. But if you're growing timber, that has a different kind of tax treatment. So you have to see an, an accountant for that. But that aside itself, there are other things that you can use the property for that don't affect the quality of your hunt. For example, if you're buying a hunting property, you might be able to lease it out for photo shoots. I lease a lot of properties out for photo shoots. People pay me to have their pictures taken in front of Christmas trees. So I sell Christmas trees, I sell ornamental nursery stock, and then I get paid for people that want to go stand by the damn things. I mean, that's found money. Another thing you might be able to do is you may be able to donate or sell cut flowers and shrubs from your property for floral arrangements. It doesn't really take away from your property. In a lot of cases, you can trim trees and shrubs and make money on it. Now, another thing you might want to be considering of is, you know, where you buy your property, say if it's in the Northeast, you might want to be in some area where there's oil and gas deposits because you can then have leases on the properties from oil and gas. Another thing that you can sell off the property if you're in a semi-urban area is you it maybe has a bunch of rocks on the thing, a lot of rocks and boulders. A lot of people want rocks and boulders for ornamentals, so you can sell rocks and boulders off of your property. If you can't do that, maybe you have a pad on the property, you can rent out a, a space for storage of cars and trucks. You know, there's a lot of landscapers who want to store a truck, a trailer, or, you know, a tractor or something like that. And they can use outdoor storage space. Why not? Another thing you might be able to do is you might be able to put up a cheap pole barn or a portable garage. I do that on a lot of properties. And to give you an example, I could buy a one-car prefabricated garage for about $3,000 and rent it out for $150 a month. In two years, it pays for itself. That's a great investment. And it helps pay the property. The next thing you might be able to do is to... Uh, to, to look at depreciation on your buildings that you have on, on, on your infrastructure that's on site. All those things can be depreciated because, you know, what you have is you have a, a business use of a business property, so you get to write off your business deductions. Don't forget those. Now, another thing you might be able to write off is because you're, you're, you're growing trees or shrubs or you're doing, you know, rental work on this property, is you might be able to depreciate your hand tools that are used on the maintenance of the property. That's a great depreciation de deduction because it's something you already bought and already own and, and then you get to write it off. The next thing you want to remember is you can probably write off your travel expenses to and from the property because that is a bona fide deduction. Everything I told you here, you know, you have to verify with your current attorney and accountant. I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm not trying to tell you how to do it. But the most important thing that you have on, on purchasing of a property is that you buy a quality property that pays for itself while you own it and gives you tax deductions. Just remember that. And the four pillars of buying real estate, the price has to be right. The amount of down has to be correct. The interest rate has to be correct. And the amount of time you have to pay the property off has to be correct. If you can't win on all four of those pillars, don't buy the property. This is Bill at Highland Hill Farm. And you can stop into my farm in Doylestown, PA, onto our main farm there, and see trees and shrubs that we grow and sell. And you can, we can help you get started if you want to start to grow ornamental nursery stock on your site or if you want to grow trees for timber. So call us at Highland Hill Farm for your trees and shrubs. We're at 215-651-8329 and we are here to help you. This is Bill. Thank you for your time. This video was produced at Highland Hill Farm. We grow and sell screening and buffering trees in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And these are our green giant arborvitas. Call us for your screening tree needs at 215-651-8329.